this story is so weird. I have to do it. I got to do this story. This is about this is a uh, video about the guy who got shot outside of the performance center. I don't know what his name is because I really haven't been paying attention. But this story begins on September the first, two thousand and fifteen. This story is from an Orlando. Uh, I think this is NBC affiliate. Deputy shoots man at WWE Performance Center. Let's see, a 29-year-old deranged man was shot after charging an, at an Orange County deputy at the WWE Performance Center parking lot Monday afternoon, and said Orange County Sheriff Jerry Demings. Deputies arrived at the training facility on Forsyth Road at, in Orlando around 1.30 p.m. after workers <laughs> reported a man with a knife in the parking lot. That's fucking insane. Demings did not say if a knife was ever found at the scene. The man whose name has not been released. We do know his name now. Um, I don't. His name is in another article I'm going to use. Um, was taken to Orlando Regional Medical Center with life-threatening injuries and critical but stable condition. The deputy, identified as Colonel or Corporal, whatever CPL means, I think it's Corporal, Stephen Wall was not injured. Deming said two deputies went to the facility after being contacted by security because of the man who had been tres who had trespassed from the WWE Performance Center. He's been someone fixed on one of the wrestlers, one of the female wrestlers, said Demings. They had most recently consulted with the sheriff's office to hire extra duty deputies to work off duty. However, today there was not an off duty deputy working. Demings said managers at the center told deputies it appeared the man was carrying a knife. So when the deputies ent encountered him, they had their weapons drawn, said Demings. At some point, the individual charged the deputy. The deputy retreated 75 to 100 feet backwards with his gun out. And at some point, the individual began to close in on him. He fired one shot and struck the individual. This all happened very quickly in a matter of seconds. So, during <laughs> how ironic that we uh, that this story comes right back up in the middle of all the rioting about police brutality. And this guy got shot by a police officer. Demi said that the female wrestler with whom the man was obsessed with not at the facility Monday. I really want to know who that is. Mm, maybe I'll figure out in one of these other stories. I'll figure out who this lady is. As long as I've known him, he's never gone there with ill intentions. Said Elvis Cal Calichon, a longtime friend, Armando A. Maltavo. I guess Armando A. Maltavo is his name. He's just a silly little kid. Kalicharan said the 29-year-old has mental health problems and was fixated on the WWE, but would never hurt anyone. News 6 discovered the WWE had filed and was granted a restraining order on August the 14th in Orange County against 29-year-old Armando Montalvo of Orlando. For reasons that are not entirely clear to the plaintiff, defendant has made the WWE focus on defendant's unhealthy and dangerous obsession. The lawsuit reads, according to the lawsuit, not only has the defendant repeatedly trespassed on plaintiff's property, but he has purposefully vandalized plaintiff's Orlando-based training facility with his own excrement. That's his own human shit. How fucking bizarre is this story? And terrorized plaintiff's employees with verbal threats of harm and by threatening the use of deadly weapons. This dude is a fucking maniac. A Twitter page belonging to... Armando A. Montalvo provides a link to a YouTube video which appears to show a man outside a WWE facility pouring feces on the sidewalk. What the fuck? The lawsuit also ordered Montalvo to pay $5,000. <laughs> man, this is <laughs> what an asshole. Okay, let me read that part again. I'm so sorry. The lawsuit also ordered Montavo to pay $5,000 for damage he caused to the WWE facility. $5,000. Neighboring workers at the WWE complex said Montavo returned during the day armed with what appeared to be a chain. He was here with a chain, waving a chain. They took him down and arrested him, said Juan Rodriguez, who claimed to have witnessed the incident earlier in August. He's waving the chain, telling the guy to come on, come on, and they took him down. Mentally, he's just a little kid. He loves wrestling, and this was his dream, Kali Charan said. He wanted to be a wrestler. Deputy said, Deputy said when they arrested Montavo on August the 4th, they found a chair, binoculars, and a whiteboard in his car which, with the words, Lita, I love you. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. 
Holy shit. A deputy wrote in his report that while he was transporting Montavo to jail, Montavo kept saying, kept asking if Lita saw why. <laughs> no. Oh my God. Mm. A deputy wrote in his report that while he was transporting Montavo to jail, Montavo kept asking if I saw Lita while I was inside the WWE building. Armando kept stating that he loves Lita, and that she is attractive. Armando, <laughs> I'm going to get through this. I got to get through this. Okay. Armando kept stating that he loves Lita and that she is attractive. <laughs> oh, good God. <laughs> Uh, Lita was hot in like 2001. I don't know about 2015, dog. She looked like Skeletor red hair. I'm sorry. Ar Armando kept stating that he loves Lita and that she is attractive. Armando also kept laughing and stating that what was happening is awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. This is fantastic stuff. Armando has been Baker acted, arrested, and the company was granted an injunction against him. Armando's friend said the system failed. He's been through the system and they just let him out, said Kali Chiron. He has medicine that he has to take, but I don't know if he's taking it. Nobody really cares. Nobody tried to help him. And this is what happens. This is um, a recurrent thing in the mental um, in mental health. Like I, my, my background is in criminal justice. And some of the biggest mental health clinics in the United States are actually jails, which shows you how bad our mental health system is. Um, in Detroit and Chicago, and I think in Los Angeles, Whichever, whatever, um, whatever those jails, I know, I know Cook County Jail and I think Rikers are two of the biggest uh, mental health facilities in the world. And those are not mental health facilities. Those are jails. But they, they house so many people with mental illnesses because mental people with mental illness, people with mental illnesses are more likely to be arrested than the rest of the population, especially people with uh, bipolar disorder, uh, schizophrenia and stuff like that. This guy obviously has some out of his mind. According to court records, deputies tried to serve Montalvo's mother with the injunction on August 18th, but she refused. Deming said that the exchange on Monday was caught on security cameras. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement will investigate the deputy involved shooting. Wall will be placed on administrative leave, which is the standard procedure in shootings. Wall is assigned to the OCSO Criminal Investigations Unit and has been with the agency since 1997, February 1997. The WWE released a statement after the shooting saying, unfortunately, a deranged individual with no WWE affiliation who had a court order prohibiting him from being on WWE property was involved in an incident with an Orange County Sheriff's deputy in the parking lot of the WWE Performance Center. We defer to the Orange County Sheriff's Office for further comment and information. Uh, the, w the, the Performance Center opened in 2013 and is the official wrestling school of WWE. The facility is 26,000 square feet and features seven training rings and edit and production facilities. Okay, so this is this is the beginning. This is uh, 2000, 2015. Um, Mr. Mr. What, what the fuck? I forgot his name already. I was so busy laughing. And Mr. Montalvo. Okay, so Mr. Montalvo um, just... Is, is a weird guy and he was being weird doing weird things and um <laughs> he got himself shot this is just, just it's just so it's just so bad but um there are some there are more recent stories going on with this montavo dude because this has been going on for five years now five years it's, it's been it's been quite scary um let's see let's look at this next article what that, oh uh, what is the next article we're gonna look at okay uh this is from wrestling inc on May 29th, 2020, man previously shot at the WWE Performance Center due in court after recent incident at WWE taping. So he came back. He came back five years later. This guy is the most dedicated guy in the world. He's more dedicated than Carlito was. Carlito didn't want to show up to work. This guy wants to show up and he's not even being paid. WWE is taking Armando Alejandro Montalvo. Back to court. Hmm. Armando Alejandro Montalvo. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, could you imagine this guy sitting at home uh, going, Armando Alejandro Astrada. If you don't remember, that's from uh, Umaga. Uh, Umaga's manager was named Armando Alejandro Estrada. Mm -hmm. I'm getting text messages. Sorry about that. 
Montalvo has been in WWE's radar since he was shot by an Orange County Sheriff's deputy outside of the WWE Performance Center. Oh, keep getting text messages. In Orlando, Florida, after an incident in 2015, he was first first found competent to stand trial in that incident, but was later found incompetent in 2017 and temporarily sent to a state mental hospital. Montalvo has been involved in several incidents related to WWE and court since then and was incarcerated for some time. He was also banned from WWE, all WWE live events. The video seen above, this is, they showed the video of him getting shot. Which um, I don't think YouTube would be would be too kindly to. Dirty has a civil, new civil hearing against Montavo scheduled for Monday, June the first. So they have another story to do. In an Orange County, Florida courtroom, the show cause the show cause hearing is related to two May incidents that happened outside the WWE Performance Center in Orlando. Dave McKinnon, who works event security for WWE at the Performance Center, noted in a court filing that he has witnessed Montalvo harassing WWE and its employees for at least the past five years. He also wrote that Montalvo has continued to ignore a court order from March 22nd, 2019, that said Montalvo was prohibited from the Performance Center. The permanent con injunction order was to bar Montalvo from several locations related to WWE, the Performance Center being one of them. McKinnon then alleged that he witnessed Montavo outside of the WWE Performance Center this past Monday on May 25th, presumably during the Raw TV tapings. Fuck. This was going on. Out this guy was outside during Raw. Holy shit. He wrote, on May 25, 2020, WWE had hired an off-duty deputy with the Orange County Sheriff's Office as an extra security to sit outside of the Performance Center in an unmarked car. At approximately 940, that means an hour and 40 minutes into Raw, I parked my personal vehicle out of the, out in front of the WWE Performance Center. I encountered the defendant while I was still at my vehicle. Defendant began his loud ranting, and I asked him why he felt a need to yell and be disruptive. In response, he told me that he needed to. Huh? He needed to. The deputy called the Orange County Sheriff's Office to send additional units and marked vehicles for assistance. And I and they arrived within a few minutes. I saw a defendant was wearing in khaki pants, no shirt, no shirt. Well, it's, I guess it's hot in Florida, right? I guess it's hot. It is, it is June in Florida and had all around his neck what appeared to be an American flag or some type of red and white striped fabric. Defendant was holding a cell phone in his right hand and piece of dark clothing or other fabric in his left hand. Defendant remained in his roadway blocking vehicle flow out of WWE's property. As deputies began to close in on him, though, he was he would move to the side. I filmed defendant with my mobile phone, mobile phone, as he was blocking the traffic in front of the WWE Performance Center, aggressively screaming and yelling wildly and very loudly. While I was not able to understand everything the defendant said, he did yell WWE and was screaming about wrestling and fans. Jesus H. Come on, baby. This this is a I feel sorry for this man. I'm, I was laughing at first, but now I feel sorry for him. McKinnon then wrote about including a copy of his own video and added, it is my opinion that defendant was manipulating the reactions from the law enforcement officers and making his presence known by his screaming and generally disruptive behavior. During this incident, I counted at least five times that I thought defendant was retreating and leaving the premises, but each time he returned to continue his rant. Defendant's last presence on this evening was, was when he drove his white cargo van towards me and the deputies, then drove in front of the WWE Performance Center, and finally he left the premises towards the far south exit of Forsyth Commerce Parkway. McKinnon ended his statement by describing a Facebook live stream Montalvo had done that this night, which you can see embedded at the top of this post. Oh, Lord. Do I really need to watch? Please, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that to myself. The filing also includes a declaration from Sergeant Scott Ames, a 20-year employee of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Ames wrote in the filing, From time to time over the last several months, I have been employed by plaintiff, WWE, to provide them with security detail at the WWE Performance Center as well as additional locations where WWE holds events. On May 15th, 2020, I was working as the WWE security at the WWE Performance Center, went at about 1,800 hours. 
a eyewitness defendant Armando Alejandro Montalvo arrived at the premises. Defendant was running and sliding and running or sliding back and forth, waving his arms wildly. He was yelling. Or he was also yelling. But I was not able to hear what he was saying. I filmed him with my mobile phone through the windshield of my car. Defendant ultimately left the premises without incident. Ames then wrote that Montalvo allegedly returned to the premises a few days later on Friday, May 22nd, while Ames was providing security to WWE. Mm -hmm. Defending was defendant was walking in front of the premises and mm -hmm. screaming loudly of the premises. Mm -hmm. oh, fuck. Fuck this. Fuck this. Fuck this. Defendant was walking in front of the premises and screaming loudly and uncontrollably. I was not able to understand what he was saying. I did see defendant was holding his mobile phone. I began filming the defendant, Ames wrote. Ames wrote that he was providing video from his own phone, as he did with the aforementioned incident. He, d he added, defendant unlike ultimately left the premises without incident, as defendant was still in front of WWE property. I visited his Facebook page to see if he was live streaming this incident and learned that he did he did and had done so. Ames used his own phone to record Montavo's live stream from Facebook. He also included a link to the May 22nd live stream from Montavo, which you can see embedded below. <clears throat> Following in the incident on May uh, on Monday, <clears throat> WWE made their filing on Wednesday. May 27th, Montalvo was served with his copy of the filing on May 27th via Federal Express at his home. He has since made the court date public on his public social media, which also shows he's had more attention and focus on WWE as of late after apparently staying away from the property from some time. Holy guaca fucking moly. Let's, do, hold on, let's, let's hear what this guy got to say. Let's see if, let's see if this is going to be... Uh, comedy or not. He's wearing like some type of crown. He's got, he's typing on his computer. Oh my god. Oh no. He's buzzing like a bee. He's got horns and shit. What the fuck is going on here? What in the entire fuck? This is a bizarre situation here. What is going on, bro? Holy shit. Is that like a baby's bib around his neck? They got like baby turtles and shit on it. What the fuck is this? Leave it open. Oh, okay. How long is it? Oh, this is 23 minutes. Oh, hell no, man. no way, buddy. No thanks, man. But this dude is crazy. Man. I'm going to take a screenshot of him. Take a screenshot. So we can, we can Man, have... put the chicken down. Oh, I had to go back for my red nose. What? You got hey, is my green turd in one of those semi trucks? Huh? A big green turd. Is it in one of those semi trucks? Okay. Can you smell the stench from here? Oh my God. Excuse me, sir. They need to borrow my red nose. He got a red nose? Okay. Oh. All right. Semi trucks? A big green turd. Is it in one of those semi trucks? Okay. Can you smell the stench from here? Excuse me, sir. Do you need to borrow my red nose? Okay. Wow. All right, man. let's finish this. What? Let's finish it. Let's finish it. What are we gonna finish, boss? I, I know y'all probably gonna see this because I'm not gonna put that. Oh, uh oh, he, he got a camera on John Cena. Uh, okay, let me stop. Let me stop. Let's go. We got one more article to go through. <laughs> we got one more article to go through. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, but this is completely took me by surprise. I'm getting text messages and all type of shit. It's super unprofessional, but hey, this is the quality trash audio that you can get from. <laughs> okay, I don't give a shit. We we, we going to have fun with this one. Okay, so uh, also Wrestling Inc. This is from June the 1st, 2020. 
Man previously shot at the WWE Performance Center streams hearing with WWE lawyer wants to subpoena the McMahons. So the guy with the red nose who shit all over the place, who now has been doing live streams, asking people if his shit is still there five years later, who says he's in love with Lita, who has severe mental health problems. Now, and guess what? He is not done. Because I, I I actually read this article before I went back and started doing the other one. This, this article is the one that made me... <laughs> no spoilers. We're going to get into this. Armando Alejandro Montalvo was in, involved in a show cause hearing with a WWE lawyer and an Orange County, Florida judge in Orlando, Florida this morning. As noted later this later week, as, as noted last week, I'm sorry, WWE rece recently filed to take Montalvo back to court due to incidents in May at the WWE Performance Center. Montalvo has been on WWE's radar since being shot by an Orange County Sheriff's deputy back in 2015. The video seen above is the first incident. Yeah, we, we, no, no, thank you. WWE took Montavo back to civil court over what, how they allege that he has been ignored a judge injunction from March 22nd, 2019. You can read about Montavo's history, the WWE, blah, blah, blah. Who cares about that? I already read that. All right, we already know the history, right? We just went through it. Today's hearing was held by phone call Due to the courthouse restriction due to COVID-19, Montalvo representing himself, representing himself, Jesus H. Christ, phoned in from the parking deck of the courthouse after driving down to file his own motion on the morning of the hearing. Montalvo also live streamed the entire courthouse visit on Facebook and the attorney for WWE made it clear that they knew he was live streaming. You can see the post from this morning at the end of the post. You can see the video from the, at the end of the post. We're going to go through a little bit of that because I got to I got to hear what how he. Well, it depends if we get, if I keep getting text messages and shit. <laughs> well, I'll never get through this. Dunaby's lawyer told the judge that the company is tired of spending money and investing resources into keeping Montavo off their properties and from harassing their employees. Montavo argued that he has the right to walk where he wants to in the city of Orlando and wherever else he might be. Yes and no, buddy. I mean, he's not too mentally ill. If he's making that argument, that's a pretty sharp argument. He does have the right to walk wherever he wants, but this is private property, right? So he can't walk wherever he wants as far as private property is concerned. As far as his behavior, he said yelling outside of the WWE buildings is no different than any other wrestling fan who voices their opinions. What? What? Yell on Twitter like every other anime avatar and uh, weirdo with Seth Rollins in their anime, in their avatar. I mean, come on. At one point, the judge asked Montavo if he would agree to stay a thousand feet from WWE property, but Montavo would not agree to that. He would not agree to stay a thousand feet away. This guy's a super fan. He's a bigger fan than me. I mean, I'm not willing to stare down WWE lawyers, for God's sakes. He mentioned wanting to face Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, Shane McMahon, and Vince McMahon in court and possibly getting a match with CM Punk or getting the chance to wash the hair of the divas to wash their hair. <laughs> it's sadistic hair washing bastard. If a, if a potential mm, mm, mm. Montalvo made severe, several bizarre statements during the hearing and was reprimanded by the judge at one point after addressing her, addressing her as baby girl. <laughs> hey, baby girl. <laughs> hey, baby girl. How you, how you doing? <laughs> mentioned several times how he is he is the business <laughs> he is the business i am the business <laughs> and offers the wwe universe a product that is much better than the one the wwe produces right now <laughs> this guy, he's an observer reader now too <laughs> this motherfucker reads melser and keller and shit oh this motherfucker got me sweating <laughs> this shit is ridiculous 
This is absolutely ridiculous. The judge ended up announcing that she will be scheduling an evidentiary hearing so Montavo and WWE's attorney can present evidence after the judge determined that WWE's attorney wants to put court to punish Montavo for going against the injunction. The WWE lawyer plans to show footage of his recent antics outside of the performance center, which some can be viewed in the post linked above. Well, I guess they got the videos, whatever. WWE's lawyer also noted that they want to come to a conclusion in the case, so they're not back in court with Montavo in a few years, finding the same case as they are now. The judge did not set a date for the evidentiary hearing, but said it would be soon. The hearing will take place sometime after mo next Monday, so that would be June 8th, uh, and that is the Orange County courts open back up for in-person hearings as they have been closed due to the pandemic. Montavo argued that he has the right to face his accusers in person, and the judge apparently acknowledged that, that sh as she agreed to hold the evidentiary hearing in person when the courts opened back up, not over the phone. Montavo mentioned wanting to subpoena Triple H and the McMahon family, but it remains to be seen if that will be allowed. The judge and WWE's lawyer did not respond to any to that request. Oh my God. Holy guacamole. This guy. This guy's a real piece of work. He knows his rights, though. I mean, he, he bat shit on a hot tin roof, but at least he knows his rights. <laughs> can't, can't be mad about that. Can't be mad about that. Go ahead, Montavo. But, dude, please, leave WWE alone, dog. This is not going to... I don't want him to end up in jail. He's a silly guy. He's probably harmless. But I know that he's probably scaring people, especially people who've been there for a long time. He, he probably is scared of them, especially the women and stuff. But he seems to be mostly harmless and uh, just a super fan. But um, this is this is scary as hell, man. <laughs> I, I wish this dude the best, and I hope he leaves them alone. So like, share, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.